I would like to just like it more, but yeah, I I don't. And f- fight me, fight me for it. You know, fight me about it. <laughs> yeah, TikTok care. was going after you. They were, you know, they were they're pointing Come out that. Come at me, bro. Welcome back to the Hub on Hollywood podcast. I am your co-host James Rojas, and I'm Jamie Blanco. On this week's episode, a beloved AMC ad is changing, but a familiar face is sticking around. Will Forte has seen the never-to-be-released Coyote vs. Acme, and he is so disappointed. Stephen King li- living a his own personal nightmare, and <laughs> Dune Part 2 is off to a fast start at the box office. But first, Jamie, but first. Willy Wonka, mm-hmm. more like Willy Womp Womp. That's what people in Scotland are saying. Did you hear about this Willy Wonka experience from hell? <laughs> I I heard it first from you, okay? And I have a lot of things to say about it, but why don't you tell the people what the what happened here? So basically, these event organizers in Glasgow, Scotland, uh, they were creating this, what they described as an immersive experience that promised to transport Willy Wonka fans into a magical realm. Uh, But it turned out to be such an epic letdown that customers called the police and compared the attraction to a meth lab. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're wondering. So, you're wondering. Yeah. Well, why? How does this happen? How? How, how? Why does this happen? Why does this happen to good people? Well, apparently, uh, the organizers, they used artificial intelligence to create the, uh, these these promotional posters and images uh, showing, uh, you know, a taste of what the experience will be like. And the pictures are very, you know, beautiful and colorful. You have lollipops 10 feet high. You have, like chocolate rivers this magical tunnel it looks something great for the family something that you know parents can enjoy little kids can enjoy and you have candy of chocolate you know what's not to like but apparently as soon as people got there they got the heebie-jeebies because they basically (laughs) walk into what is seemingly like an empty basically practically an empty warehouse that's filled you know sparsely with with what you could describe as decorations but you have like this weird like this this uh, this kind of maze contraption. You have these Willy Wonka characters. This guy portraying Willy Wonka, and these other characters as like this unknown menacing thing with a mask that was like scaring children. And I, not a character oh from the movie or the or the book. Just like this made up AI character and this Oompa Loompa who looked like she was ha- not having a good day and standing in front of like this meth lab kind of science lab huh. experiment. But it was so terrible, so horrible, and the fact that there was basically no candy given, literally one jelly bean, one jelly oh. bean per child was passed out. Uh, parents were not happy, so much so that they called the police uh, to, to do this. Dang. And if you look at the photos, uh, there's, there are a bunch of photos on the Hollywood Reporter, and the video, the pictures, it's just so mm. sad and depressing. <laughs> oh now everyone's God. talking about it. Well, how much did they charge, too? Like, if this was, like, free, like, you get what you pay for, but also fa- false advertising, but, like, did they charge people to get into this thing? They charge 40 bucks per person. So, oh, say if you're, say if you're a family of four, what is that, 160 bucks for, oh, uh, no. for a oh, scarring no. experience? It's No, take them all good. to jail. Haul them take away. Them all- <laughs> Listen, yeah. I, my uh, husband and I, we're, we're so angry at our own, like, recent experience that is not too dissimilar from that like they target families they know that you have to keep your kids entertained you're trying to be good parents and all of this stuff and to bring you into a, like a literal horror show and lie about it and charge yeah. you for it and not give you candy um that sounds like willy wonka like if they took willy wonka and made it into a horror a horror movie but which is not a stretch of the imagination by any means as it was a little bit terrifying in the, to begin with but um what the heck yeah, yeah someone, call the someone, cops. Was, someone was joking that in the actual willy wonka movie there are kids like disappearing and presumably being killed in the yeah, movie yeah. and nobody called the police then but they call the police <laughs> for this event um so the the event organizers they refunded tickets and they apologized saying that it was a very stressful and frustrating day they say quote unfortunately last minute We were let down in many areas of our event and tried our best to continue on and push through and now realize we probably should have canceled first thing this morning instead. Not good. (laughs) Yeah, you don't get to collect. Like, the kid, yeah, 
you cancel. You cancel. No, you cancel. So many and, scar uh, children. No, and, and plus, no candy on top of it. That's the, probably the the you know slap in the face, Inj- uh, insult to injury, kind of a thing. No candy, no chocolate, and no Timothy Charlemagne. <laughs> Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Call the police. Call the constable. <laughs> whatever they have over there. The constable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. Real nightmare scenario. But you know who else is living a real life scenario, nightmare scenario? Mr. Stephen King, the King of Scream. The ki- the King of Scream, um, who is dealing with a really unfortunate situation. I mean, we're all dealing with an unfortunate situation here. Who isn't? Um, they had in. Massachusetts had been filming uh, back in 2021 a remake of Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot being one of uh, Stephen King's most terrifying features. Uh, I believe it was made back in the 70s into a film. Um, And they had remade it back in 2021. They filmed in Boston, Clinton, Ipswich, Princeton, Sterling, all over the place. and the film has yet to see the light of day. Is it in a crypt somewhere? Is it in a coffin? Um, creeping in the shadows? We want it to come to fruition. We want it to come to light. And so does Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, so he took to Twitter. <laughs> I'm not calling it X. He took to Twitter and he, he writes to his fans, Between you and me, Twitter, I've seen the new, he's seen the new Salem's Lot and it's quite good. Old school horror filmmaking, slow build, big payoff. Not sure why Warner Brothers is holding it back. Not like it's embarrassing or anything. Who knows? I just write the effing things. So this film, you know, when you when you film something, James, typically within a year and a half, maybe two years max, the film comes out. You get to see it. But for some reason, Warner Brothers is holding this indefinitely. And as we know, Warner Brothers has a very recent track record of taking good films that are already completed and just throwing them in the shredder. Yeah. Control so all the really, weights, basically. Control all the and very, very much hoping that this is not happening in this scenario as well. What I mean, what's your take on it? The thing that that piqued my interest was th- the fact that Stephen King said that he watched the film and he liked it. I I could be wrong, but I believe that there are other you know Stephen King adaptations, and he's publicly said he doesn't like that version or he doesn't like what they did with it or changing stuff. So to have him come out and say he saw it. And he actually liked it, uh, you know, goes to show how good this movie uh, possibly is or was. And it's a shame Mm -hmm. that that we are it's not getting any any justice, any, you know, (laughs) especially for the cast of the crew who worked on it. Uh, That's that's uh, Mm -hmm. that's a shame. That's terrible. The literal thousands of people who were involved in in the production of this. We brought you the casting calls for uh, background on Salem's Lot. I wanted so badly to be one of the vampires. Like they were looking for background people to be movie monsters. And that's something I haven't ticked off my my list yet. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. Um, But those of my friends who did, I would love to see them on screen. It's, It's such a, it feels like a violation you yeah. know, when you have something like this, the amount of time and effort and, and human capital put into these projects, into these feature films, for them to just disappear into dust, for them to vanish, right? In this, it's um, it's a real shame and it's really heartbreaking. And hopefully, hopefully, this will not happen in this scenario. Maybe they're just waiting for the right time, the right year, the right moment to release this. Um, but Stephen King also adding on Twitter that um what that warner brothers currently has shelved it that the movie is muscular and involving yeah that it has the feel of old hollywood when films were given a chance to draw a breath before getting to business something that i deeply love and uh appreciate in in any film any television show or whatnot i'm gonna have i'm gonna bring this idea back up a little bit later um so it sounds like, and especially having Stephen King himself involved as one of the co-writers of the film adaptation, it has to be good. Yeah, I'm predicting the title of Stephen King's next book. Stephen King presents the mystery of the disappearing studio executives. Yeah. 
<laughs> like what is happening? What is happening with these with these studio execs? So I I don't know, but uh, they have they're building uh, a new track record, and uh, like Stephen King, uh, he said he saw the film. Many others will never get the chance to. Uh, will Forte, he too took to Twitter to say that he just watched Coyote vs. Acme, uh, the the end of this interesting roller coaster ride of a story. We first heard a Coyote vs. Acme was going to be shelved, never to be seen, never to be you know uh, appreciated by audiences. Then there, there was this internet backlash, and then Warner Brothers said, you know what, we're going to shop it around, we're going to see who wants it. There's hope that it's going to get released. And then mm-hmm. at the end of the day, Warner Brothers says, no deal, it's not going to happen. So this movie likely will never be seen. However, as I said, Will Ugh. Forte has seen it. And he says, you know, he went to Twitter. He said that, you know, hearing that the movie was going to be, quote, deleted, he was thinking, you know, this must be some kind of hunk of junk. But then he saw it and it's incredible. Uh, he released a statement to the cast and crew. He said it was super funny throughout, visually stunning, sweet, sincere, and emotionally resonant in a very earned way. And he and you know, he was saying as the credits were rolling, he was thinking about how lucky he was to have worked on this, something so special. And then that that excitement turned to confusion and frustration, wondering why the heck is this movie not getting released? Um, he admits he doesn't know what's you know the, all about the ins and outs of the Hollywood, how business, how that part of mm. the industry works. But at the end of the day, uh, he's very upset and disappointed, uh, to say the least, though he is proud of the work that he and the rest of the crew uh, mm. did and had on this, on this film. When you think of the number of stinkers, right? The films that are truly awful that make it to the silver screen, that you know, that 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 make it. Why would you take a film that is so incredibly reviewed, that's so highly regarded, you know, in in test audiences, yeah, um, and those who have seen it, who that will make you money, and just throw it in the garbage, yeet it off a cliff. It doesn't make any sense. It's like the whole film is a metaphor for the Roadrunner and the Coyote. Yeah. And we're all the Coyote, unfortunately, in this uh, scenario. Um, So WB Warner Brothers CEO David uh, Zaslav was recently booed by uh, BU (laughs) students at Boston University. That's right. um, During the commencement speech last year. So, yeah, I mean, we tell it like like it is. And that's what I love about this town. So... I heard the Roadrunner had had a comment, but it had to be censored. So all you heard was meep beep. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the quality content, the quality uh, humor that you get here on the Hub that on Hollywood. That you pay for here on the Hub so, on Hollywood. Oh no, no, you don't pay for it. It's free. <laughs> uh, that's right. But what you can do to help support us so that we can continue to make this quality content for you: smash that subscribe button, hit a like. Sign up for the notifications, the little bell, share this with your friends, um, interact with us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, we're everywhere that you are. Um, come join in on the conversation, talk about movies with us, talk about filmmaking in New England. And um, yeah, it's, it's, we have a lot of fun here on The Hub on Hollywood. Absolutely. And you know what else is fun? <laughs> what? Mm, winning money. And, Hell yeah! <laughs> and now uh, soon in Massachusetts, we could be winning uh, money one chomp at a time. D- no. If that makes sense. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Yes, dun, dun. it does. Well, the dun, Massachusetts dun. State Lottery Commission, they just announced that they will be rolling out limited edition scratch tickets commemorating one of the most famous movies ever made in the state, Jaws. That's right. Filmed out on Martha's Vineyard. We got Jaws 1, Jaws 2, Steven Jaws Spielberg. Jaws 3D. What, <laughs> what is not to love? Um, it's literally my father-in-law's favorite film. Um, and he was, he's obviously, you know, he's a townie. He was born and raised here um, in New England, uh, north of the city. And this is like, my husband told me, this is like one of the only movies he was allowed to watch growing up. Um, and my father, my father-in-law loved it so much, you know, he'd watch it over and over and over again. But what's not to like, what's not to love about the classic Jaws? And now, now you can get those scratchers and win yourself a ton of money. Um, yeah. For wh- just, where, uh, can we, where can we find them? 
at every liquor store that you can, uh, that you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, those who buy uh, $10 tickets will be able yeah. to win up to a million dollars instantly. Okay. Um, yeah, and plus, the tickets will also give players a chance to enter a second chance drawing, five of which will be held with six winners uh, for a total of 30. And I believe that they, will, they would receive a three-night stay for <laughs> two on Martha's Vineyard. Full circle. Oh, there you go, yeah. And, not, and Jamie, not to go on a, a not to go off on a tangent, but I think this is a sign because recently <laughs> I I, le- I really did have a dream maybe like a night or two ago where uh, my, my wife and I we play the scratch game every now and then and yeah. I dreamt that we that I I was going <laughs> this is going to sound crazy but we were this is going to make sense too Okay. My wife and I were talking about like different singers and artists and we ended up talking about Taylor Swift. So in my dream, I dreamt that me and a bunch of friends, and Taylor Swift was among the friends group. We were going somewhere, going to the beach, going to like a cavey area. Again, it's a dream, makes no sense, but we were going. Okay. And before we left, I was like, oh, let me just buy the scratcher really quick. So I bought a scratcher, and then uh-huh. as we were going over there, I scratched it off, and I won $100,000. So yeah. I think this is a sign of whether <laughs> uh, either I'm going to win big by possibly buying this Jaws scratcher, or uh, Taylor Swift and I are going to become best friends, and we're all going to go to the beach together. Um, both of those is is a win. <laughs> both of those is a tremendous win. Thank and you. I thought you were going to say it's going to be like with... one in 100 million chance of happening. <laughs> no. Look, I'm an optimist. So if that if you make friends with Taylor, just invite me, okay? Woo-hoo. Taylor. Um, <laughs> manifest it. Make it happen. Keep those dreams alive, and and yeah, bring bring them to you know not. From dreams to reality, James. <laughs> we got We're this. all about making dreams come true on, the, on Hollywood. Yeah, and if you win, if you uh, buy a jaw scratcher and you win, remember who told you about those uh, about those yeah, scratchers? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, mm-hmm. don't uh, don't leave us hanging. Just just like I don't know, just buy us a coffee or something. Um. <laughs> it's a long shot. <laughs> it's a long yeah. shot. Well, um, let's move on to this next thing. You know, this ad became first i think a lot of people found it to be cringe and then eventually this cult like following came about and i'm talking about the ad regarding amc starring none other than nicole kidman um i've talked about this before Mm -hmm. Uh, the 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 ad where it's like a a rainy day a rainy night and then you see Nicole Kidman with her like jacket on and she's walking through a puddle. She walks into the movie theater and says, this is a place where, where magic feels real and heartbreak feels good in a place like this and yada, yada, yada. It goes on for like 20 minutes, this commercial. And it, at first I was like, oh my God, this is like a long commercial. Get to the point. I eventually, you know, it grew on me as well. And it apparently grew on so many other people that, you know, it became its own little meme, became its own little thing. Um... I guess I'm not sure if they had like a time limit because this was made in 2021. I'm not sure if they have to like make edits, but there will be edits and changes made to this ad. The good news is we are still going to be seeing Nicole Kidman. She's still going to be there in awe and wonder Mm -hmm. watching the big screen. But the big change that you will notice is one, instead of like a minute long ad, it's going to be condensed down to 30 seconds. And Mm -hmm. instead of her watching the screen, watching Ryan Gosling and Emma, uh, Emma Stone dance in La La Land or dinosaurs prance around in Jurassic World, uh, she will be watching uh, on the screen Elvis and Avatar. Mm-hmm. Not the last Airbender, mm-hmm. but the James Cameron version. Okay, so, um, yeah. So there is a change coming for the AMC ad, but don't worry, Nicole Kidman is still, will still be there. She will still be praising the the magic of cinema yeah. and encouraging us to go <laughs> fill those seats. Okay, I'm, I'm weaving like a story in my head right now, James. Yes. So... Um, this is how the day would go. We would go get some snacks that we would yes. sneak into the movie theater because, you know, it's too expensive to buy snacks. I didn't say that, AMC. Don't listen to me. No. Um, you know, I might stop in at the liquor store, uh, buy buy some Ooh, scratchers. I like You it. know, get some of those little tiny bottles and anything you want me to pick up for <laughs> you nips. at the liquor store. Yeah. <laughs> Any nips you like, James? Uh, yeah, give me a what? What's that? I haven't had it since college. Uh, the the red cinnamon one, the one that all the girls oh. like. What's that one? <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't you know, know but about. yeah, I know what yeah. you're talking about. So I'll pick up some of those, and then you know, with your scratcher and your nips and your hidden candy, you know, uh, you go to the movies, and you watch Nicole Kidman up on the silver screen, and you watch Dune Two. 
or Absolutely. something like that. So I mean that that's that's a nice scenario. I will say though, I know you say you don't want to buy you know candy or food there at AMC, but if you are watching Dune, you have to buy the Dune popcorn bucket. Have you seen this? Thing? Oh God, no, I have not. No. And so basically, well, maybe I did. basically, it's like the top of it looks like the the mouth of the worm, and there are like these oh. like these prongs that are like its teeth that are like basically <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Like you you, you put your hand into this bucket and then you grab your popcorn hold it on tight because when you pull it out those prongs are going to want to you know yeah, fish yeah. away any any one of those uh those popcorn those loose ends but yeah mm-hmm. uh, it was uh snl had a great time making fun of it uh, on one of their last episodes so check out snl popcorn bucket because it's hilarious but uh you have to get that it's it's iconic now okay all right I'll, I'll save a little extra then for that. We'll, we'll get the popcorn bucket at least. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of Dune, uh, Dune, it is hitting theaters right now as we speak, and it is already uh, making waves uh, at the box office. The sequel, it, it earned $12 million from the Thursday preview showings, and in all, during its opening weekend, it's expected to make between 70 and $80 million. I reviewed this during the last episode. Uh, you can check it out. Check out on YouTube. Check out on uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. I love this film. I mm-hmm. want to see it again. I saw it in the Dolby Surround Sound uh, Theater. And next time I see it, I want to see it on IMAX. It is incredible. So many great yeah. reviews coming out. And you are going to be watching it soon, too. D- yeah, I'm doing this soon, weekend. too. Yeah, I'm doing soon. Doing soon. Um, yeah, uh, this weekend uh, we get the babysitters lined up, uh, hopefully, and my husband and I are going to go watch it. So very, very excited um, for that night out. I guess we're getting the popcorn. I guess we have to get the the sandworm popcorn. Um, yeah. So you gave it an amazing review. So did Mac and Goo. So did everyone else. Um, just really, really excited for Dune Two. And James, anything else we need to know before we go in there and have this cinematic experience? Just you, you go to the restroom. Go yeah. to the restroom beforehand. It's two hours, 40, 45 minutes. Um, the, if you enjoyed, really loved Dune 1, you're going to go, you know, you're going to be over the moon for, over the moon for Dune Part 2. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's going to, it's, it's amazing. Uh, like I described, the last hour of this film is just, you know, pedal to the, uh, pedal to the metal action and the lead up, up to that, it feels like a roller coaster. Mac and Goo, another reference to Mac and Goo, but they, they said and it was perfect analogy. It feels like a roller coaster that's like ticking, tick, 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 up to the very first drop to the very tip. Everything's building up to this moment, building up to the last hour. And that mm. hour is a great ride. Paul yeah. Atreides is not only the savior of his universe, but the uh, theatrical universe and ours. Yeah, Timothy Chalamet is saving me. He can save me any day. And uh, <laughs> any day you're watching this, uh, he is doing it. But again, yeah. amazing cast. Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Josh Brolin, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, Dave Bautista, Austin Butler. Uh, fantastic. As soon as you're done with this episode, watching The Hub on Hollywood, go to, your, go to your nearest theater, find the biggest screen, and watch Dune Part 2. All right. On our way there. And guess what you shouldn't watch? <laughs> oh, God. What? <laughs> Since we're talking about what we're watching and what we're going to watch and what we are watching, I forced myself to watch the rest of Avatar The Last Airbender, the new series out on Netflix, because I wanted to give it just a fair shot. And um, I had some hot takes in the last episode. Some people on Twitter not happy with me. You know, yeah. they were a lot more okay with the with the gratuitous violence, you know, <laughs> than I was. Um, I was a little bit more upset that I couldn't watch it with my son. But it only got worse. It changed. Ah. So there are some redeeming qualities. There's some redeeming parts of this series, but mostly it is just a hot mess. It is inconsistent. Storylines are just smashed together. There's no room for these characters to breathe. And I imagine if someone has never seen Avatar The Last Airbender before, that they're just extremely confused um, with the number of storylines that are put together. And just so much is lost in just the sweet 
well-paced interactions of these three main characters um, and the challenges that they face together and the foes that they come across and the friends that they come across and the lessons that are learned across along the way. Um, there are some characters that are completely different, right? Their characterizations are completely off, like Kimbumi um, from Umahu. Yeah. Oh, and um, making him so antagonistic instead of just, you know, the, the silly person who's trying to teach Aang to think outside the box and whatnot. I just, it takes so much away. I think so much is been stripped away from this story and not enough has been put back and then the things that are changed that they waste time with you know are are add absolutely nothing to the story so now do you um, think people who've never seen the animated <sighs> show would be affected by this like say they're, they're going in fresh going in clean watching this for the first time and they are of a certain age, so the graphic, the violence, mm. uh, doesn't doesn't bother them that part. Do you think the story on its I own think, merit would or is good? I think that there are a lot of parts of it that are just so rushed and pushed together that anyone watching this, even if you've never seen it before, you're like what what is going on? Like why are there ten characters introduced in one episode and? You know, one person's doing this, one person's doing that, the other person's doing this, and somehow they all connect, and now we're doing this. It just feels like a, a lot of hurrying up, like, now we're doing this, da, 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 now we're doing this, da, 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 now we're doing this, and not a lot of genuine, organic sort of story flow, or storytelling, or character development. Like, everything is, is just very rushed and mushed, and I think even if you've never seen it before, like that shows that 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 really shows and i don't think that there's enough there to really grow close or have a meaningful connection to these characters interesting so again so i've i have not started the show yet um i'm not in a in an immediate rush to watch it but yeah i've, I've heard i've heard you know it, it's very mixed some people are digging it uh like you said in the last episode you know the actors are are good uh but the mm -hmm. stuff they're working with isn't you know isn't the best stuff it doesn't translate as well or has not been translated as well yeah um and yeah. so um yeah, this is interesting. Do you think it'll get a season two? Do you think it's good enough to do that? Mm. It might be good enough to get a season two. Maybe. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. I'd like, I I would like to just like it more, but yeah. I, I don't and fight me. Fight me for it, you know, fight me about it. <laughs> yeah, TikTok care. was going after don't you. Care. They were, no, they were, they're pointing Come out that- Come at me, bro. You, yeah, they're saying that, yeah, like, Avatar has plenty, like, the animated uh, of show violence has plenty in it. of violence in it. You know, you have you have people's, like, air getting sucked out of them. You know, talking about Legend of Korra, or you have the blood bending. You have a lot, a lot of, oh, yeah, the you blood know, bending. A, lot of, a lot of, you know, violent stuff. But the difference that I think you were trying to emphasize is the graphic nature of it. And yes. how graphic and how much they show it yeah. needlessly or, you know, or otherwise. So that was the part that you were trying to convey but other people mm. were saying, you know, this thing, this show is already violent. You know, ba the basic of the whole show is fighting. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah. I, yeah, so, you know, people will uh, disagree and we love that feedback. You know, whether yeah. you like it or not, we do appreciate it. We like th this discussion and, uh, you know, we're <laughs> shouting you out right now. So thank you so much for, for participating in, in our TikTok thread. <laughs> uh, again, join us uh, at Hub on Hollywood. We're also on Twitter, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere else uh, you listen to podcasts as well. Mm, exactly. Um, Jamie, and subscribe also, on YouTube. It really helps us out. Absolutely. And tell your friends. Tell your mother. Tell your tell your uh, other <laughs> uh, movie loving friends or or your New England based actor friends who are out there trying to get work because we love promoting uh, local al actors, local talents. Uh, speaking about talents, uh, I think there's a lot of it in this show that I'm still working through. You finished it, but Zorro that's on Amazon Prime right now. Uh, I love. Zorro and I <laughs> am really, really digging this show. So uh, I know you finished it. No spoilers. Uh -huh. I'm enjoying it so far. What are your thoughts? Um, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was well paced. Um, you know, and you get the sort of telenovela kind of um, 
storylines, but they're they're dramatic enough and realistic enough yeah. to to keep your attention. Um, so I, I think it flowed really well. It flowed. My only, I just you know, some of my my criticisms are very superficial. I think the Zoro, well, he's a very good Zoro. He's like he's like the Giga Chad Zoro. <laughs> he's like he's like just so preppy. <laughs> I'm so um, tired of handsome people like <laughs> us being ostracized uh -huh. and condemned yeah. for mm -hmm. something that we can't control. I'm sorry, James. I'm sorry, I'm Jamie. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah, they're very attractive people, and I think you said like they're like not not cliche handsome or pretty or beautiful, but kind of what did you even say generic beautiful? But yeah, they're good I looking, did. Yeah, but something I think, like but, that. But they have the acting chops plus the the action. I love the action, the choreography. It's so, so good. Again, they're utilizing, yes, they're fighting good. with a lot of stuff. They're fighting with swords, axes, whips, great whip usage in this show. Um, <laughs> in, in, uh, great guns whippage. as well, you know, flint and uh, those flint lock pistols and, and, mm -hmm. and rifles. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of good stuff uh, in this show. And I love that how it, it appears to be filmed on location of, of real places. The sets are really well mm -hmm. done. They look very real and lived in. And I don't know, I, I'm driving with everything about this show. So if you love Zorro, <laughs> check it out. Also, uh, the guys over at um, uh, Caravan of Garbage, uh, a, a YouTube show, podcast, they actually just talked about the Antonio Banderas, Catherine Zeta-Jones, uh, Zorro, and they're going to be doing the next, um, you know, going over um, the next film as well in their next episode. So Caravan of Garbage, shout out to you guys. You guys are fantastic. I love you. Uh, check out their last episode on Zorro. But uh, I think with that, I think it's time for a little... Movie trivia, Cinequotes. Okay, I think oh, you're yeah. right. Last week we were not so we were not so uh, fortunate. <laughs> it was a Sunday stumper, but it is not Sunday, so in theory mm -hmm. this should be a, a little uh, a little easier. <laughs> Hopefully, we a should more have a chance. Yeah. We should have a chance. So, um, for, those, for those of you watching, listening uh, to the podcast, uh, we will try to give a few seconds after each quote to try to figure out which movie this is. So you can try to play along, you know, have your brain, um, you have the wheels working and spinning in there. But without further ado, let's go ahead and play the first quote in three, two, one. Here it is. It's about season changing. This book, this book I had for many, many years, but I had not noticed this, this part that I would like to read you. Please. <clears throat> the trees are coming into leaf like something almost being said. Any bells? No. And I'm not cheating, I'm just looking up Cinequotes on my phone because I can't actually hear it on this computer but from what i'm reading because it it, re it gives you the quote mm -hmm. uh no i don't i don't recognize this how about you i don't i don't i don't recognize the actors voices uh nor the the quote from the movie but uh we can skip this one we'll go to quote number two see how we okay. do with this one so we'll skip and then get ready for quote number two in three two one he seems He's bound up, isn't he? Mm. I think he's afraid of uh, change. Scary. Mm. Especially after what we went through. That life's not going to go on unless... If you don't. If you don't open up, right? Hmm. What do you think, James? It's not ringing a bell. I'm not recognizing the the actress, the voice. Shall we skip again? I think we have to. No, we've been doing pretty good with the ones that we have gotten correct. We've usually gotten them on the third quote. All right, now here is quote number three. Fingers crossed. Three, two, one. Good things come in small packages, an old idea, but one you'll see tonight in a new light. In the only interview he's given since becoming an internet phenom. He's given since becoming an internet phenom. Small packages. 
Um, okay, we're getting closer. Um, yeah. It's like a 60... Oh, oh, I know what this is. What? I believe I know what this is. So, I believe it's Marcel the Shell. Marcel the Shell? With shoes on. Oh, okay. So, it came out uh, last... Uh, came out in 2022. I watched... This is based off a YouTube series, which eventually made its way onto... Mm -hmm. uh, into a movie. And that 60 Minutes ticker... Reminded me uh -huh. like, oh, this is what's her name from? I can't think about a thing of her name right now, but it sounds like oh. her from this movie that I saw in well, the trailers. So let's try to submit Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Submitting in three, two, one. Boom! <laughs> and he gets it. He gets it, and the crowd roars. <sighs> James, 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 James. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, all all right. right, good job. So, what are we at? I, I think we stopped um, keeping count of our record. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll like, review it. I'll put like a bucket or a bucket. Or, I can't even think right now. My, my like mind four or is, six. is blown with how well we did in this round. Uh, but Yay. let us know: were you were you uh, onto onto this film before we were, <laughs> or were you just at our pace? Uh, let yeah. us know down in the comments. Really See, good episode, I was gonna Jamie. Guess yeah, I was going to guess Lyle Lyle Crocodile. That was what popped up in my head, too. But same kind of thing, dancing animals yeah. and, and things like that. So this was a great episode, James. There's so much to talk about. There's a lot going on. Um, we always suggest that people sign up for the local casting agencies. Um, we've got Boston Casting, Slate Casting, CP Casting, Kendall Cooper Casting. Um, there's a number of big films that are coming to our area We've got Ella McKay shooting in Rhode Island right now. Boston Casting has a new project called Sorry Baby um, and a number of other uh, projects that we'll get into more detail um, as those sort of shoot dates get closer. But um, this is the town. This is Hollywood East. This is where movie magic happens. And this is where we talk about it here on The Hub on Hollywood. So subscribe, comment, share us, join in on the conversation. Do send a quotes with us. Yeah. Um, and let, we'll, we'll see how we fare next week. <laughs> Excellent. Well, for this week for the Hub on Hollywood, I'm James. I'm Jamie. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>